So in my previous videos, I've done an overview of how to set up Bluster Bare Metal on Fedora and then how to use Hecate as a REST API on top of a Gluster cluster to uh, dynamically provision storage from that cluster uh, using an API. So now that we have an API and a storage cluster, uh, we can integrate that into Kubernetes and OpenShift. I'm going to do it in Kubernetes here um, to create a dynamic persistent volume provisioner uh, for pods. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate here today. So uh, let me open up this file. So there's, so here is how you uh, create the storage class um, resource for the Gluster provisioner. So um, storage class is a special kind of resource that lets Kubernetes know how to, uh, it's a plugin for uh, dynamic provisioning of persistent volumes in Kubernetes. And for each volume, for each plugin, there's different resources that are needed. In this case, you need the rest, uh, the rest URL, the API endpoint there. And then uh, in my previous video, I set up the Hecate API to not use authentication and this authentication is needed. So I set that up, uh, but it's pretty easy if you go into the JSON configuration file for Hecate, the comments show you how to do it. So uh, the user is this, uh, we're using the default namespace in Kubernetes, and that's where this secret is going to be. And the secret is defined right up here. This is the base64 encoded password that's super secret. It's admin secret. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and create that. And um, that doesn't really create any objects in uh, in our namespace. It just educates Kubernetes on how we want our storage to be dynamically provisioned. So if we do a get all here, we still just have the Kubernetes service. So next I'm gonna create uh, the a demo pod. I'll show you this real quick. So here's the persistent volume claim. Note that I haven't created a persistent volume for this claim to bind to. It's gonna be dynamically created because I have this annotation here saying, uh, storage class default and the storage class object that we created earlier, its name is default. That's how it knows which plugin to use. And then I say, give me eight gigabytes of storage. And then the name of this uh, persistent volume claim is cluster volume. And then here I've just got a re replica set. I'm setting it up as a replica set because I'm going to prove that the uh, storage is persistent later by killing the pod and having the replica set regenerate it. But we're going to uh, create a mount so if we go down here, the cluster volume, we're gonna name it my vol as a volume in the pod spec and then mount that at slash mount. And then the main entry point for the container is just gonna sleep. That way we can exec into it and uh, do a test. So let's create that. So um, when we do that, in the background, Kubernetes is gonna run off and uh, use the cluster dynamic provisioner to create a cluster volume and then bind that to the persistent volume claim. So if we look at the um, persistent volume claims here, we can see that our cluster volume is bound to this persistent volume. And this was dynamically created for us. If we go in and describe the PV, we can see here that, um, you know, the, the type is cluster FS and this endpoints name here is interesting. Well, I'll go, I'll show that here in a second. But this is the volume that Hecate created for us, right? And this kind of looks like a Hecate volume name here. And that is the Gluster volume backing this persistent volume in Kubernetes. So if we go in and we describe uh, the Gluster dynamic uh, Gluster volume service, you can see here that it has a set of endpoints here. And these are the, the port numbers are irrelevant but the IP addresses are the IP addresses of the Gluster nodes. Um, and if I switch over here to Hecate um, and we do a cluster uh, info, no, cluster info, topology info, topology info, you can see here that these those endpoints in that service in Kubernetes are um, all listed, all nodes in the Cluster, cluster, cluster. So let me jump back here. 
So now that we have that running, let's uh, let's go into the pod. And we're going to write something into this persistent volume so that we can prove that it's persistent. So if we come in here, we can say echo testing into mount A. We can go echo mount, not echo, cat mount A. All right. So let's exit out of this. And then we're going to delete this pod. And because it's part of a replica set, the replica set will recreate it. But the pod does go down and the storage, you know, it's going to be rescheduled potentially on a different node and have to have the um, store, the persistent storage mounted on that node. So we can delete that. Um, but by the time we can type in the new command, we can see that there's also there are there's already a new pod running and it's been running for five seconds. So if we exec into that pod, we should still see our file A with testing in it. Let's make sure that that's right. And we do. So we get what we expect there. Um, so let's exit out of here. And uh, if we delete our um, demo, so that's going to delete the... The deletion of the pod doesn't really matter, but the deletion of the persistent volume claim matters because when the claim disappears, the dynamically provisioned persistent volume underneath it will be deleted automatically. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And if we do a cube control get all, you can see it's all gone. And so our the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume underneath is gone. And if we jump over to our Haketi CLI machine and list the volumes, the volume's gone. So you can see the the dynamic provisioner provision storage and then cleans it up afterwards. So this is really cool and uh, yes, uh, hopefully this was useful to you.